Welcome back to CW11 Home Track Heroes. Some great racing action here at the Northwest Mini Stock Tour as we're 30 laps to go in this one. Yep, 10 laps done so far. And Lane Sonholm and Casey Garber are already sitting in positions three and four. So it's going to be a great show ahead of us with those two that far up at the front of the pack as we get set to go green flag action. Tanner Dates, the new leader in this one after our last two leaders involved in instance going to the back of the pack. And Tanner Dates with a good run here going into turn number one. Yeah, Rick Eggerman Jr. hanging on to that second spot so far over Casey Garber and a hungry Lane Sunholm and Lane won last week on the show and we, we know that 18 car is fast we know it can get it done here at Evergreen Speedway. One of his toughest competitions definitely that 96 car of Casey Garber there oh and Garber gets a little contact that time with Ackerman there and they go down on the inside of turn number one there Ackerman the low side Garber the high side. Yeah you would think that uh, Casey Garber and Lane Sunholm would know that they still have 30 laps left and take it easy but they're going to push all that they can and Rick Eggerman Jr. is stuck in the middle of that battle for uh, second place. They come off a of turn at number three there, and you can see the run that Garber got to the outside there, but Ackerman holding his line right now in that inside lane, and Lane Sunholm there's nowhere to go, starting to see some smoke. Oh, your leader, Tanner Dates, smoking heavy off of turn number two, and we've got a new leader. Huge upset there for the four car. He was doing so well, hanging on that lead. Motor, let's go. He's going to pull it in safely, so great job by him to get it into the infield. Tough break there, and through all that, Casey Garber and Lane Sunholm were able to get around Ackerman, so that was a whole lot of shuffling around in the lineup. Yeah, Casey Garber, your new leader in this one, and definitely two of the fastest and best mini stocks in the Northwest battling out here at Evergreen Speedway. And this is kind of the race we thought we would see. Exactly. And I, I want to keep my eyes off that fourth position yet. That's Carson Heller. He's been away from racing for a little bit, and he's hungry, and he's showing some speed in that double zero car, which is actually owned by Lane Sunholm. And we know that double zero car is fast and can get it done. So I would not take my eyes off that battle for third right now. You see his uh, son home right there, about a car length back on Garber as they go through the corners. And good battles back behind him there. Ackerman not letting to walk away too far. Yeah, exactly. This is a great four-car breakaway from the rest of the field right now. We see the other number 77 of Scott Murphy just hanging out in fifth, waiting for stuff to develop. 24 laps to go. As you see Lane Sunholm using every bit of real estate getting all the way up against the front stretch wall as he looks to the inside of Casey Garber going down the back straightaway. Battle for the lead here going into 24 laps to go. Sunholm looks low this time. One more time off of turn number four. Oh, contact. Carson Heller and Ackerman make contact through three and four, and Ackerman goes around. Tough break there for the 22 of Ackerman. As we'll take a look at the replay. We see Heller just carries so much speed on entry, and I don't think he expected to catch the 22A that quickly. This segment is brought to you by APC Auto Spa. APC Auto Spa in Woodenville is where you go for the high-end customer service at a budget-friendly price. Car details, washes, they have a comfortable customer lounge with products for the DIY enthusiasts and even free loaner cars. Hand washes, interior and exterior details, paint correction, ceramic coatings, and paint protection film. Look for APC Auto Spa throughout the year at community car shows and charity events. Yeah, I think a few of the drivers need to take their cars over to APC Auto Spa to get some of the body work and maybe some of that uh, free free paint correction done on these cars as they've been beating and banging for uh, close to 30 laps now as we have 10 laps to go. Lane Sodom getting a great jump on that restart over Casey Garber and that's a good battle between the 77s for third. Yeah, good battle back there, but uh, really surprised of how dominant Lane Sunholm is over Casey Garber here. I thought that Casey Garber would give him a little bit more of a battle here, but he's able to walk away, really got the handling set up on that 18 car. Yeah, and plus all the laps that Lane has turned at this track this year is definitely helping him uh, overcome the 96 Casey Garber here. Is I think it just comes down to lack of laps in these cars for the drivers. It's really showing the, the big gap between first and second place. It's great to see Terry Armstrong Jr. He was earlier one of those leaders there involved that earlier on vacation, making his way back to the field. You see Xander Peters, another one of those drivers who were uh, up there in the lead and had to go to the back of the pack, slowly making their way through the field. Yeah, that is the battle just inside the top number, uh, inside the top 10. Xander Peters making his way around Bristol and now catching the 15 of uh, Freddie Vigil, who was also involved in an incident early on. So it, it's cool seeing these drivers rebound as we are coming up on just six laps remaining in the Northwest Mini Stock Tour main event. The lone Dodge Neon up there battling. You see Ackerman and Travis Barnes now in the 23 car going to try to get in the battle with Ackerman. Yeah, Ackerman's re rebounded very nicely after uh, the incident between him and Heller and had to go to the back of the pack, but he's definitely rebounded very nice in that 22A. He's been moving forward, and it's been fun to watch him. 
Five laps to go in this one as it's pretty clear up front, but we've got battles throughout the field still going on here. And that one right there in front of you, Travis Barnes and Rick Ackerman Jr., but there's your leader. You don't even see Casey Garber in the shot until just now as uh, Lane Sunholm now going to catch some lap traffic. Yeah, Lane Sunholm, when he first got this car earlier in the year, it uh, seemed like he was really trying to figure it out, uh, possibly overdriving, maybe underdriving, not using it to its full ability. But we know that car can be dominant. I think he's really hitting the stride with it. And no better time to hit his stride in that car than the summer showdown 40-lap main event for the Northwest Mini Stock Tours. Just three more times around for that 18 -0. Yeah, you see them go by Craig Fander and Ryan McLeod putting a lap on them as those drivers struggle a little bit today. But Lane Sunholm has just shown the dominance of that 18 car, both the car and driver. That's just a combination that's come together to make two strong combinations into one superpower right now in mini stock racing. Yeah, with just two laps remaining, uh, the team, the 18 team, has done a great job today because not only were they battling different cars than they're used to, they also had to battle different track temperatures than what they normally go, go with as the 77 of Murphy is dropping outside the top five now as Ackerman is able to get up into fourth. And here comes the 23 of Travis Barnes into the top uh, five as well. White flag one more time around for Lane Sunholm as he sneaks by his daughter there, Cassidy, in the seven car as Lane Sunholm looking to collect the big money and the big trophy here on Summer Showdown weekend as he comes through turns three and four and off of turn number four, big checkered flag. He wants to go side by side with his daughter across the checkered flag and there he is, your winner, Lane Sunholm. Casey Garber coming home second, Terry Armstrong Jr. third, Rick Ackerman Jr. able to rebound to fourth after that uh, spin out with about 20 to go. So great job for Ekman Jr. in the 22A as we're going to head on down to the Angela Wins podium to catch up with the top three. Pretty good weekend to be Lane Sun home. That was a pretty fun weekend. The car was amazing all weekend. I thought there's nothing I can say about it except for all these people that are here working on my stuff. They make my job real easy. Any, any sponsors? Who else do you need to give a shout out to, Lane? Uh, JNR Truck Rentals, Lang Auto, Foss Motorsports, J2. Uh, I can't think of all of them. There's a lot of them. A great run, and, and you bring yourself home now here with a second place finish. Go ahead and talk about the race. The yellow and how you just mentally stay involved. Yeah, I knew it was going to be hard to beat Lane. I wanted to get out in front of him, but then when he was on my bumper there, I knew it was going to be tough to hold him off. So he got a million laps. Uh, congrats to those guys. Uh, they deserve it. So um, thanks to Jason, uh, Vicky, Smith, uh, Black Diamond, uh, Garber's Garage, and anyone else who's helped me get here. This is this is a good race to come to and put your name out there in the mini stock. So. Terry, congratulations. Well, that was a long one. I can't imagine how hot it must have been in that car. The heat wasn't too bad, just trying to keep my calm, cool, because this was a, a long race and I knew it was going to be about nutrition. Right, and, and it ended up being exactly that. Do you find yourself here in a podium with the third place finish? Who do you need to thank for getting you here? I need to thank Racers Against Child Abuse, SAPQ, Rubs and Spices, all my sponsors, my brother, my wife. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be here today, to be honest with you. You. They made sure that we were here to put on a show for you guys. Thank you for coming out. Yeah, and how awesome is it for those drivers to come out in front of the packed house of Evergreen Speedway on this summer showdown weekend? Yeah, summer showdown is such a big weekend across the Northwest for racing, so every class that's here, it's like the Daytona 500. You saw Terry Armstrong Jr. third place, but the emotion is still very strong going into this weekend. Exactly, yeah. We're going to move in to the class that had some of the largest numbers in cars as we had the B main event for the Legends and an A main as they put on shows both days. We're going to check on this incident from the B main on Saturday as things got a little bit crazy for the legends early on lap one as you see him up front there uh, Jeff Mueller on the inside there as he leads the field down here and you can see them just a great field of cars over 35 cars showing up for this race day and going into turn number one it's just a little tight yeah, and that's not the way you want to enter the corner. As we saw the 98 of Aaron Flett get a little bit airborne. Thankfully, the wheels came back down. He didn't roll it over. Still a very tough landing in these legends. They don't have a whole lot of suspension. Yeah, definitely hard contact. is a very bad slam right to the back there. And unfortunate for uh, Aaron Flett as it was uh, one of the harder contacts we saw the weekend. Yeah, and Aaron, he had to be take, transported off this off-site, but he was in good spirits and hoping that we'll, be, we'll see him back in the car before the year is over as that is 
a tough, tough landing for one of these uh, little cars. Yeah, and uh, good to see Aaron uh, in good spirits, and we'll see him back out here for sure. As we're going to roll in to the Saturday A main event for the Legends. We saw them last week on Home Track Heroes. We see them again tonight on the front row. That is the local, the 11C of Chad Center and his outside, the 25B of Jaron Giannini. Then Trace Thompson, the 54 car in row number two, and then Nick Carey in the number 30 car. We got the 12 of Jordan Holloway and to his outside, the 25X of Brandon Cole. Great to see Parker Stevens back in the four car on the outside of him, Billy Weber in the 28. In row number five, we've got the 11R of Ricky Arnold, sponsored by Rev Up Energy, and to his outside, the 11M of Rick McNeil. Then you see the 33 car of Kyle Lang, the outside of him, the 36H of Jacob Heider. And then we got the 09 of Cole Alton, sponsored by Central Welding Supply. At his outside, the 55, Austin Coonan, sponsored by Ford of Kirkland. Then Bryant Carlson, the 25 car, sponsored by Max Power Law, and the 43 of Dylan Wolf. The 76 of Corey Boyle is back with the Absolute Auto Care from Gig Harbor. And his outside, the 36 of Robert Clark. Then two cars with the twos, the two of Jeff Mueller and the 2B of Tanner Bennett. Rounding out the field, we got the 37 of Mason Nelson, sponsored by Dirt Cheap Sewer, and hits outside the 7Z of Zach Reel. Great field of cars. Like we said, 35 on hand here. Had to go the B main cut down to 22 to start the A main. And uh, wow, some exciting racing. Yeah, and this is a stacked field. And these are some of the best legend drivers all on the West Coast. As Chad Center getting a little bit swirly on the green flag start. Trace Thompson going to try to take advantage of that going down in turn number one. Great to see drivers from all over the West Coast here for this one. You see the teammates there, Brandon Cole and Parker Stevens going side by side as they go three wide. Oh, somebody sideways down the back stretch. That looked like the 11 R of Ricky R. So the caution flag is going to come out before we complete a lap. So we're going to get a full restart here. As there we see a Ricky Arnold along the inside of the back straightaway. It looks like he stayed off the inside wall. So we'll go back and take a look at it. Yeah, they all bunch up right here. It looked like uh, maybe Trace Thompson gets sideways there and they just kind of bunch up and just loses off a turn or two there. Yeah, it looked like Ricky chose to spin to the left instead of run over the back of Billy Weber. I don't know if uh, Billy quite knew the 11 was all the way sucking up to him, but it looked like Ricky Arnold took evasive action and spun to the inside, avoiding contact, and hopefully all cars will be able to continue. You. The legend cars, as you see, a special flagman to get this one started. Ty Dillon give the initial start down there, and I think he really enjoyed being on the flag stand. Yeah, you seem to have some fun up there with uh, John Peterson, our head flaggers. We get set, still got 30 laps remaining. A full restart. We'll see Ricky Arnold back there, fifth, uh, starting ninth in the fifth row as we get set for 30 laps of legend action, and they're definitely not going to disappoint. No, and Chad Center hopefully want a better start this time through. Is, uh, he's got one of the better cars on the outside, Jaron Giniani, and he's a great racer there. You see a lot better start that time for Chad Center on the inside. Yeah, not sure if it's Trace Thompson just giving a little too much pressure, maybe bumped him at the wrong time when uh, he was trying to throttle up. As we got a little bit of contact, and around goes the 30 of Nick Carey, and that's going to spin a bunch of cars into the dirt. Looked like there wasn't really any hard contact. Some great driving from the rest of the field. We saw Billy Weber, Brandon Cole, I think was part of the initial contact there, but it looks like all drivers going to be able to drive away from the incident, which is the best case scenario. Yeah, as you see him come down here off a of trimmer two here and just all bunch up there. It looked like maybe Carey and Cole made contact there, sent him around, and Weber had nowhere to go, so three of your top running cars there, so uh, two starts down, and we're still struggling here to get the initial start going. <laughs> still not a lap complete. Uh, it looked like the 30 of Carey just went really wide on entry, maybe overdrove a little bit harder than he thought uh, he was going to, and Brandon Cole just tried to take advantage of that, and that was the result. A bunch of cars spinning, a lot of dust up in the air, but it didn't really look like there was really any hard contact great driving by the rest of the field we see him go four wide and not hit each other so that was some great evasive drive from the back of the pack we're gonna hop on board with brandon cole brandon cole's inside look there as you he's on the inside of carry there you see him go up there oh looked like carry just came down a little bit there and uh cole got sideways on the gas and uh always fun on the inside view yeah we're gonna take a quick break and hopefully get some more laps in in the legend a main event here on home track heroes mm -hmm. 